Hello everyone and welcome to the open day for the MRES in Creative Computing at the Creative Computing Institute. My name is Georgina and today I will be your host. And during this session, we're going to be sharing all about the program of the MRES in Creative Computing. And in order to do that, we'll have with us Dr. Yulia Unesco, who is the course leader for the MRES at CCI. And we'll also have the pleasure of having three current students at the course, Yifan, Simone and Joe. To give you an overview of how the session is structured today, we're going to start by talking a little bit about the CCI first. And we've got three different videos prepared for you, which will, first of all, walk you through all the CCI spaces, resources, and facilities. There's another one who will, which will cover all the research themes, the social mission at CCI, and the public program activities. And the third one will cover all the amazing stuff that there is in the local area of CCI's campus in Southeast London. Then I will invite Yulia to join us live and she will give us a presentation about the Embrace course, overview, structure, units and, and approach. And after that, we'll have 20 minutes where we're going to be having a student panel with three students and we'll be going through some frequently asked questions. During that section, we invite you to share with us any doubts or comments that you might have about CCI or the Embrace program, and we will happily cover and give all the answers uh, needed in, in the spot. So before we continue, a note to say that if you have difficulties following along the session, just know that this session is being recorded and it will be re-uploaded on YouTube with English closed captions. So know that you will have the chance to catch up at your own pace if you miss any detail. All right, so let's get this started. We'll begin by watching a video that will walk you through all the CCI spaces, facilities, and resources that are available to all CCI students. Welcome to the CCI Facilities Tour. Over the next few minutes, we are going to show you around the campus and tell you a bit about the facilities and resources available to our students. CCI South London is located across two buildings along Peckham Road in Camberwell. We share our buildings with Camberwell College of Arts, which is a fantastic opportunity for CCI students to get to know and collaborate with students studying courses like fine art, photography, graphic design and illustration. The Green Coat Building hosts teaching spaces and technical spaces for students studying creative computing and creative robotics. It also hosts the Dark Lab for AR, VR and interaction design. This summer, we are going to be creating additional technical spaces in this building to support the new creative robotics courses that open in September 2023. CCI is located on the fifth floor of Peckham Road, where we have teaching spaces and technical labs as well as a kitchen, which is our main student hangout and study space. We have several high-spec workstation computers where you can work on machine learning, data science and other intensive computing tasks. We have a library on site with access to a range of books, ebooks, periodicals and databases. Our dedicated librarian, Beninia, ensures that these resources are kept up to date to help you complete your studies. Across the courtyard is Garden's House one of a growing number of halls of residence across London. And on the ground floor is the Learning Zone, a space for self-directed study that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to all UAL students. There are places to eat, like our canteen, student advice centre and support services, and an art and materials shop. In summer 2023, we will redevelop the former London College of Fashion building at High Holborn. We will share this building with UIL's brand new PhD hub, which will help to ensure that CCI's focus remains around the development of world-class research. At our Holborn site, we will create new technical, teaching and library facilities to support our new courses in computer science and data science. The technicians here at CCI all have a decade of experience doing really cool stuff with emerging technology. We'd love to help the students here with any questions they have about their projects. The Dark Lab is for experimenting with interaction, projection, sound and VR. Great for permanent projection setups. We've got a couple of VR booths, we've got loads of speakers and many other toys to play with. I specialize in creative coding and especially interactive things using Kinect and cameras and 
game engines, 3D graphics. We have a whole bunch of equipment that students can take out on loan, including projectors, Kinect. We also have laptop lockers where you can get a laptop to work with. Physical computing really is just the connection to the physical world, to the data. Students have played with physical computing in all sorts of different ways. A lot of interaction with gaming and the VR world as well. Sensing various different bits and pieces, using touch especially, all sorts of different sensors uh, to put things in a virtual world or vice versa. They could have things coming from a virtual world and bringing them into the real world. We generally lend Arduinos to all of the students and with that we have a collection of different modules. This allows us to interact with the world in various different ways. Those modules could be sound sensing, they could be image sensing, they could be sensing the environment in some other way. But the benches here are for the students to solder and uh, prototype, put different boards together. We have different components for different levels of exploration with electronics so you can quickly get something together on breadboard, or you might want to make something that's more solid. I help students who want to use the digital knitting machine, the digital embroidery machine, and who are also thinking about incorporating electronics or computation into textiles or wearable kind of technology. We have a Silver Reed digital knitting machine. Um, so that's a domestic knitting machine that can be computer controlled. So you can use it to create digital patterns and that's used to produce knitted fabric. I tend to think of it like a 3D printer kind of for textiles. And then the other textiles machine that we have is a brother digital embroidery machine. So that's kind of fully automated programmable embroidery machine that you can use to embroider textiles. This is Digital Fabrication Lab, and we have 3D printing machine and laser cutting machine here. For our 3D printers, we just drag your design into the software and slicing it and directly push it to the printer and your design will be materialized. For the laser cutter, it's also very efficient, even very complex pattern. It'll only take like uh, several minutes. Most of students will use it to um, generate the housing for their physical computing things. It helps students to materialize their project quickly. To find out more about our facilities and equipment, please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now, a lot of students are interested in finding out more about CCI's research themes that we explore here at the Institute and the social mission that underpins the research, the teaching, and all the public, public program activities that we run here at the Institute. So the next video will cover all of that and will give you an overview of all the research themes that we are exploring and developing here at the CCI. CCI's key research themes are creativity, machine learning, and AI, human-computer interaction and platforms, and big data and digital citizenship. So we're interested in how machine learning and AI can transform people's creative practices, enable the creation of totally new kinds of work in music and art, and enable new people to get involved in creative practice. We've created a lot of software tools like Wekinator, Mimic, and InteractML, which are used by tens of thousands of people around the world to make new music and art and games. We've had staff and students exhibit work that's created with AI at venues like the Whitney and the Barbican, um, and we've had collaborations with artists and musicians like Arca, Massive Attack, and others. A number of staff and students are also leaders in community and activist groups. For instance, the Code Liberation Foundation teaches women and non-binary people how to make games, and the Critical Platform Studies Group explores how digital platforms might encode and even reproduce patterns of problematic power structures in society. This rich and exciting research environment is the product of many staff coming together from lots of different disciplines. These include not just computer science and art, but music, engineering, design, philosophy, art history, and all sorts of other domains. We all bring our excitement and experience from these different research projects with us into the classroom. Uh, and it's a place that I really love teaching and I'm excited to share it with you. 
CCI's teaching, research, and outreach activities are all informed by our social mission. This mission has three components. They are digital inclusion, diversity in technology, and digital entrepreneurship. First, we are committed to the inclusion of marginalized people in the creation of technology and in the use of technology. This informs what we teach both in the classroom and beyond the classroom. It also means that we have to recognize that the lack of diversity in the tech workforce right now both uh, stems from and contributes to broader problems in our society, and we have to address these too. Secondly, we're really mindful about the impacts that technology has on the broader world. We have to recognize the potential harms that come with technology, whether that means um, harms to well-being or even exacerbating bias and inequality. At the same time, we're very involved in projects that aim to have a more positive impact on the world. We are collaborating with the Decolonizing Art Institute at UAL right now to try to surface and mitigate bias in museum collections across the UK. We have staff and students, some with disabilities themselves, who are making technologies that enable new ways for disabled people to interact with technology and create new forms of technology for themselves. And third, CCI is committed to creating digital entrepreneurship opportunities for marginalized people. If we want tech to be a force for good, we need to enable people to apply technology in ways that they're excited and passionate about, where they know technology is gonna be useful. So this means applying creative computing to new application areas, to addressing needs in people's communities, and to affecting social change. The Creative Computing Institute's public programme can be anything from talks, workshops, short online tutorials, conversations, and it's really aimed at engaging with the community outside of our students. Students join in it too, but it's very much for the general public. The reason I run it with so much passion is because it's a part of my ongoing research and practice, which is about including unheard voices in technology development. I think that we've got as much to give communities as we can learn as an institution from communities. And so engaging with the general public is engaging with users and having that dialogue, that critical dialogue, and then coming back and designing software and hardware from a more informed position is really important. I would love to tell you a little bit more about Techyard. It's a huge part of the CCI's public programme and I've been running it for almost three years now. So it started in the pandemic as an online tutorial course for young people and now it's grown into a hybrid programme. We go into schools, we run workshops here at the CCI, we collaborate with galleries all around London and hopefully soon beyond. And again, it's the ethos of engaging people outside of our student cohort with the critical creative computing conversation, ethics, and of course, like skills as well, right? So we can run 3D modeling workshops, virtual reality workshops, and we work with beyond young people now. So I do loads of stuff for young people, but also done some work with adults as well. Examples of past public program workshops that we've run include inclusive design in wearable technology, designing a feminist chatbot, and queering voice AI trans-centered design. And the last video that we've got prepared for you will give you an idea of how vibrant and exciting is the area and culture that surrounds CCI's campus in Southeast London, in Camberwell and Peckham. I hope you get to enjoy it as much as we do. The area of Peckham and Camberwell is very much becoming a centre for art and performance and music and so it's a natural home for what is a brand new centre of creative technology. There's so much to do in terms of eating out or bars, pubs. It's very easy to get to like Brixton, Peckham from Camberwell. I love Peckham. Something about the area, Camberwell, Peckham, New Cross, Deptford, with Goldsmiths as well, kind of creates quite a nice community. I definitely feel like where I live, which is close by, has a kind of community spirit. Every year it just grows in terms of more things to do, cafes, galleries. The galleries I like to go to is the Hannah Barry Gallery, the South London Gallery, Peckham Levels, do a lot of pop-up galleries, so it's always changing. 
Peckham Plex is really cool. It's just next to Peckham Levels. The best thing about Peckham Plex is the cinema tickets are $4.99 and it's the cheapest cinema in London. Also in the area, there's lots of parks. My favourite park is Brunswick Park. It has Bauer Art Gallery set up by UEL students. It's just got such great access into other areas in town. The East London line goes straight to Hoxton, Shoreditch, Dalston. The community at CCI is really friendly. Everyone can just express themselves and just be themselves. It's my third year studying at the Creative Computing Institute and i have really enjoying my time and I'm very happy with all the knowledge I've got from the tutors and my peers. The community is really nice here. I feel like every time I'm stuck, I can always find the right person to talk to and I always get further with my project. Something about the space is really nice. It's a very kind of calming environment nice teachers I find so it, it kind of creates a welcoming environment I feel like I can spend a whole day here and feel pretty happy I can safely say that the technicians are really attentive and kind of excited as well <laughs> if you get Pete talking about something he'll talk to you for like a very long time about like 50 different things that you could be doing with what you have I also go to the technical space quite a lot because it's really nice to just walk in and ask questions and then solving the, the issues that always come up when you code. I think the most valuable thing I've learned here is that just by talking with people and asking them about what they're interested about and what they're passionate about, this is how I've learned most. All right, now it's time to start talking about the Embrace in Creative Computing at CCI, the reason why you're all here today. So I'm very happy to introduce you to my colleague, Dr. Yulia Unesco, who's the course leader at the program and who will share with us the course approach, units, and content. Hello, Yulia. Hey, Gigi. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thanks, Gigi, uh, for the lovely intro. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to this. Uh, brief intro to the MRES uh, course here at the Institute of Creative Computing and thanks for being here. Um, I will be sharing my screen in a second uh, to go over some slides that much like last year follow a Q&A structure. But in the meantime, as Gigi said, I'm Yulia and I'm the course leader and senior lecturer on the MRES program. Um, and today I kind of want to cover the things that are not necessarily on the website. Um, so I'll be addressing uh, the big questions for the program. I'll give you a glimpse into some of the stuff that you'd be learning on the MRES and the kinds of projects that you might be interested in pursuing during this course. All right, uh, the MRES. Super simple. I have divided the presentation into eight questions that, much like last year, um, will go over, uh, you know, kind of like some of the big picture things um, and give you enough context and more information about the program. We will cover things such as what is an MRES, who should apply, why consider one, what will you learn, and what are, what are some of the pros and cons of pursuing a master in research, as opposed to other postgraduate programs. Right, so I'll start with the first big one, which is uh, what is an MRES? Um, an MRES is a one-year program that gives you a master of research degree. Um, and I like to think of an MRES as a minimum viable product for a PhD. And I wish I came up with this tagline because it's so good, it, you know, it rhymes and I think it would kill in a, in a commercial ad. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, an MRES is an MVP for a PhD. So it's almost like a trial run for a PhD or commercial research with some added benefits. Uh, right, the second question is why do a research master's? Um, and a quick one, uh, answer to that is that, you know, a PhD is very scary um, and will push you right into an existential crisis if you're not prepared. And I'm speaking from experience. Um, and if you were to ask people that have done a PhD or that are currently um, doing a PhD and perhaps a lot of the, you know, pop cultural discourse around uh, a PhD existential crisis stems from two big things. 
The first one is not really knowing what research is like before embarking on a PhD. Um, and uh, secondly, never having learned what the process of going through research uh, looks like. And this is what an Ember is kind of sets to solve. Um, and looking back, uh, I wish I had done one myself so that instead of being lost for about two, three years of my PhD and finishing in now a record seven years, uh, I would have just spent that one year learning about all the basics of actually undergoing research in a structured way rather than in a sporadic, you know, lost existential crisis -y way uh, that most PhD students actually have to deal with once they embark on this journey without this kind of training. So learning about the process of doing a research project and being immersed in a research culture prior to doing the PhD actually saves you a lot of time uh, and energy in the years to come. Um, and that doesn't matter whether it's academic research or commercial research. Um, right, third question, who is this for? Um, and I, I like to think it's for, you know, everyone, but mostly for uh, anyone with an intense thirst for knowledge uh, and who wishes to actually produce knowledge themselves. So this can mean you just came out of an undergrad or a postgrad degree uh, and want to produce research, or if you're already a professional but would like to learn more about the research process, about publishing and about contributing to knowledge um, in your field of interest. Bottom line, if you've you know, like you're interested in something and you feel like you've only just scraped the surface of, of the knowledge that's in that field of study, then you're 100% right. Um, and this would be the right, right place to explore uh, in depth your areas of interest, especially if those areas are related to one of the themes that Rebecca was speaking about in the previous video uh, here at CCI, which are creativity, uh, machine learning and AI, human computer interaction, platforms, big data, and digital citizenships. Um, and this is broadly speaking. So yeah, anything creative computing, really. Um, <clears throat> next, let's go over some of the pros and cons on uh, pursuing an MRES as opposed to a taught master. And I'll start with some of the advantages, such as uh, the fact that it helps you develop the right research skills to undertake a research project. Uh, you'd also be working in an identical environment to other PhD students, so it would almost be like being a PhD student, except it's a one year instead of a hypothetical three to seven years. Um, and uh, you'd be joining also um, postgraduate seminars uh, and you can collaborate with PhD students if you, if you so wish to do so. Uh, next, it gives you a huge advantage if you'd like to actually pursue a research career. It makes you a much, much stronger can PhD candidate. Um, and that's not only here at UAL, but in any other you know, PhD program around the world. Um, would, it would also kind of help you in whatever research employment you engage in, uh, if that you know, takes the shape of R&D, let's say, um, because Embrace is actually a testimony for your ability to do research. Um, and getting an Embrace doesn't only qualify you to do research in a specific disciplinary area, like uh, you'd expect from an MA or an MSc, but rather it qualifies you to produce research, to work independently, to ask the right questions and follow a rigorous path of answering these questions and think uh, creatively outside the sphere of a certain discipline. Um, and of course, you know, doing an embrace at CCI qualifies you as being able to produce research in any of the themes uh, more broadly tackled here, such as, you know, creative AI, machine learning, or human computer interaction. In terms of cons, I would say that a master of research uh, program uh, is usually a bit more self isolating and less structured than a thought master, such as an MA or an MSc. Uh, and that's because thought masters place a bit more emphasis on advancing the skills of a profession through kind of like lecture seminars and activities, while research masters um, is usually a bit more independent in nature. Uh, but this is not really the case here at CCI where you get kind of the best of both worlds because the MRS has a self-directed kind of independent research study, which is running along a series of thought units. So uh, it is very much structured uh, and there is plenty of Thought content, um, which actually leads us to the next question on what will I learn? So the embrace in creative computing is structured into six units. Um, three on methods, which is what the M stands for on the slides, um, and three more applied, which is what the A stands for, or you know, practical, so to speak. It's more hands-on programming and experimental work. Um, and that's also including the one self-directed research project will end up in a draft paper and, a, and or a PhD proposal. 
Um, so the three method units uh, go over kind of a key aspect of uh, the research project. Uh, we'll go over methodologies and methods, over uh, what other people are doing in your field of interest, and over the framework for research ethics in the field of creative computing. Um, and to offer a more detailed example in methods one, which is what I'm teaching this block, um, Embrace is structured in blocks, but you might you know, be more familiar with the term term. Um, so what I'm teaching uh, in this blog is um, all about kind of like the research lingo. Uh, we'll be making sense of all the buzzwords that are usually thrown around in the grab bag style. And you will uh, see that there is a very clear structure uh, to pursuing research. Uh, in that sense, you'll be learning about you know, things such as disciplinarity and the multiple facets of intra, cross, multi, inter transdisciplinarity um, we will learn about transdisciplinarity as a modus operandi at cci and how to tackle complex problems such as wicked problems by following a transdisciplinary approach um, we will then talk about the human in human centered design and how it stems from a humanist perspective of a human which you know it's set apart from anything non-human based on abstract capacities such as free will individual agency and rationality uh, and we will see how this dualistic approach, this closed notion of what represents a human in opposition to other theoretical concepts such as nature in this diagram is extremely problematic. And how the notion of the post-human sets to kind of tackle that. So in that sense, we'll be looking at the post-human from both post-humanism and transhumanism and see how each of these philosophical perspectives tackle the human as an open notion. Uh, then we will speak about problem statements, research questions and hypotheses and how they sit along each other in a research proposal, as well as go over the rules of coming up with a good research question, uh, which is probably sometimes harder than you think. Um, we'll go over kind of the structure of a PhD research, this being a slide from my own PhD journey, um, in which I have studied the interaction between anthropomorphism as a perceptive phenomenon and anthropomorphism as a design tool in the context of AI agents. Uh, and in doing so, I have devised a methodology that looks at the resulting action uh, and the meaning construction in the interaction by inputting case study conversations into generative maps such as these ones. Um, we'll speak about the main uh, four theoretical elements of pursuing a research project by taking a house as a visual analogy uh, in which the methods are the activities, um, the methodology is kind of the room in which you perform uh, those activities. Um, the theoretical, theoretical perspective is the style of the house um, and how you start making sense of those activities. Um, and lastly, we have epistemology, uh, which is the foundation uh, of which it can be three. Um, so we'll speak about objectivism, constructivism and subjectivism. And we will also be covering uh, the research world lingo that loves terms such as qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods. Um, and we will further learn how to distinguish methodologies such as case studies, historical research, ethnography, phenomenology, grounded theory, uh, and set them apart in terms of goal, output, unit of analysis, methods, all with uh, examples of each. And you'll be learning um, how to put together a literature review, and if needed, how to write academically. Uh, and all of this just in methods one. So uh, I've actually only covered a, a brief introduction um, to the first uh, item on this list. Um, but in methods two, uh, you will learn to critically engage with other works in your field to look up what's already been done uh, and to question what else needs further research. In methods three on research ethics, you will learn about research ethics from experts in the field. In uh, the two applied units, four and five, uh, so in coding and research design and experimental data, you will be introduced um, to more advanced notions such as first learning Python and then pra practically exploring machine learning AI in the context of your research interests. And finally, in parallel, you'll be working on an independent research project where you will get to apply everything that you've been taught, uh, which leads us to the next question on outputs. So what kind of outputs are expected um, as part of an EMBRES um, program? So you're expected that by the end of a research project to have not only the knowledge to undertake an applied research project, but to have uh, both the draft academic paper uh, and the solid PhD proposal. So in other words, by the end of this, uh, you will also 
perhaps have a published paper or uh, or a very solid chance of continuing your career in research, commercial research, or a PhD. Uh, and if you do all of these, I like to show the slides. Like you do your thesis, you write a PhD proposal or draft paper, and there's a presentation. Uh, then it's really simple. You get an MRS. <laughs> um, and finally, the last question I think is uh, why an MRES at UAL CCI? And there are many reasons why you should do a master's of research here at CCI. Um, but the first that comes to mind is um, uh, kind of like the very interdisciplinary nature of this degree and the right balance of thought and self-directed material. Um, and you will actually be in contact not only with top creatives and researchers in the field of computing, but also kind of top end artists, designers, engineers from whom you get to learn a great deal. Um, and the community is also an important aspect, um, as you've probably seen in the previous video. It's a diverse, fun, and kind of intellectually engaging uh, community. I hope, uh, but don't you know take my word for it. Maybe, maybe I, I'm you know <laughs> I have misled you, uh, which is why we've got some member students here today that may uh, or may not tell you otherwise. But anyway, if you're interested in creative computing research, this is the place to be. Um, so yes, that's basically the course. Uh, and if there are any essential questions, which I haven't covered, uh, we will come back to those at the end. In the meantime, I will pass back to Gigi. Thank you, Yulia, for your super insightful presentation. That was amazing. Now, it's a pleasure to invite Yifan, Simone, and Joe to this virtual space. The three of them are current students at the Embrace in Creative Computing at CCI and are here to share a little bit about their experience at the program. Now we've got around 25 minutes for the Q&A section and we'll be starting with some presentations for some introductions and then we've got some frequently asked questions, but we encourage everyone here watching this session to send us any questions, doubts that they might have about CCI or the Embrace so we can cover it whilst we're here. So first of all, I think it would be great that we could um, hear from all of you guys and, and yeah, I would like to maybe pass on the mic to Yifan, who's at the top of my screen. Yifan, would you like to introduce yourself and maybe talk a little bit about your research, what you're currently working on at the Embrace and Creative Computing? Thanks. Um, my name is Yifan Buchik, and I'm the Embrace student for um, a CCI, and this is my second year of studying a CCI. And during this Embrace program. Um, I'm still developing a research from my previous one at CCI, which is focused more on uh, internet inequalities and uh, to address like how to use computational practices to address um, algorithmic bias uh, with a specific focus on uh, queer communities. And uh, my research is actually inspired by Dr. Pixcraft, where they lead um, some units uh, focused on incorporating feminism um, into the coding practices and also how to design an equitable and also ethical uh, technology. Thank you, Yifan. Thanks for the introduction. That sounds amazing. And would you like to share a little bit about how come you chose the MRES in creative computing at CCI instead of maybe another career path? Or would you like to share a little bit about that as well? Uh, yes. So, um, so basically, I spent one year studying at CCI last year during a regular MA MRS, MSc program where I found um, passion for uh, research and especially after talking to Yulia, who's the course leader, amazing person. And I found like um, throughout this program, I could develop a solid uh, research skills because like before I only know like a little bit about like a research but I don't know how to do it like systematically and that's my main goal to um, to gain the skills like a solid research skill throughout this program. Amazing thank you Yifan beautiful. Joe you're next on my screen so would you like to share a little bit about yourself your research and and why you chose the MRES in creative computing? 
Hi, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm Joe. Uh, I am looking into labor, work, and automation, and kind of artificial intelligence is what I'm mostly fascinated by. Uh, I'm kind of fascinated by the idea of artificial, artificial intelligence, stuff like the Amazon Mechanical Turk, uh, where it appears that um, we're having robots do all of our work for us, and actually underneath it's just human beings and human labor. Um, I've been fascinated by this for years, mostly from having a lot of rubbish jobs for like delivery and stuff. Um, and so we've recently formulated an experiment where I'm going to go into uh, Deliveroo again, but this time as a researcher, um, and I'm going to do research on the door as I'm giving people that food. Um, it should be good fun. Uh, I hadn't really thought I'd go back to it, but this course is sort of bringing a lot of different experimenta experimentation ideas out. Um, before taking the course, I didn't have a clue how to do an experiment or really what they were. I come from an arts background, so um, kind of thinking about scientific stuff wasn't really my thing. So it's it's really nice to to go into studying like in a researcher kind of mindset. Um, and I suppose that's why I took the research course. Uh, I was just interested in the idea of knowledge um, as a whole. Um, and Yuli has been really good at like putting a lot of the, a lot of the more challenging parts of kind of social studies, or sociological studies, or like academia, in really, really nice and simple terms. Um, I, I think I've got everything in there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm up to Q and A. Thank you, Joe. That was amazing. Simone, you're next. Would you like to share with us a little bit about your background? How come you ended up at the MRES and what research are you working on at the moment? Simone, you're muted. Just a note. Okay. So, could you hear me? Yeah. Yes, it's working. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Simone. I uh, came from China and uh, studied fashion design before in MA and BA. My research interest is to combine virtual reality with Heidegger and uh, Wittgenstein's language philosophy to explain, explore the development of related language and culture in CSR. I came to CSR because after learning fashion design in my MA study, I was not satisfied with just letting people enjoy my achievements and the results. I want to let people participate in my design process. I think that's uh, what the design made for the human and the nature. Uh, to be honest, I studied, uh, the first time I applied to CCR was to uh, study PhD, but you know, I'm quite, interdisciplinary students. I have quite different fields in compared with CCI. So the tutor the staff here just trust me to study MRS or uh, come here. That's all. Thank you, Simone. That was amazing. Okay, so we've received a question from from the chat. So we might as well start with that one. So Wong, Rachel, thank you so much for your question. So Rachel, writing from Hong Kong, uh, they say, may I know what is the biggest hurdle when you guys are pursuing an MRIS degree? I am now in product design field, UX, UI, and interested in exploring new domains. Thanks. Who would like to go for this one? Uh, OK. For me, I think the biggest challenge is that, you know, I have never studied about coding and programming before. So it's quite difficult for me to study Python at the first several, at the first several weeks. And to be honest, it's quite confused for me to basic, uh, uh, basic programs and keep ch chase with my students who had already studied in the similar field before. That's all. Thank you, Simone. Would you like to add something there, Yifan or Joe? Um, I, I have some experience of uh, UX and also UI 
and to me, the difference is, is that uh, UX UI may be focused more on uh, the visual part and also the research part. Meanwhile, here at CCI, uh, maybe we address using like the compute computing tools. So instead of just using uh, like softwares like Adobe or uh, Figma, uh, maybe here you also uh, need to learn a little bit like coding skills, you know, to do the prototypes. But like in the end, uh, like one of the main themes at CCI is focusing on human computer interaction. So I feel the main goal is the same. It's like combine the research skills with this your current like a practical design skills, you could produce like the products uh, that benefit the society. Mm. Thank you, Yifan. That was amazing. Joe, would you like to add something there? Or shall we move on to the next one? Um, yeah, sure. I, I'm from a similar background, so UX, UI kind of thing as well. Um, and yeah, the coding has been the biggest level without a doubt. Um, I don't have I only have like a bit of front end development experience um, and nothing back end. So yeah, exactly the same as Simone. It's been a little bit uh, tricky understanding some of the some of the more like in depth code stuff. But the classes are very very good in explaining kind of like the background and why those things happen and why you have to use matrix for certain things or whatever. But it's it's all very new to me as well. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's the biggest hurdle for me. Thank you, Joe. That was amazing. All right, we have another question from one Rachel. Thank you so much. And it says, as you are, as you guys are focusing on independent studies or research most of the time, I'm curious to know the interactions among peers from day to day. Thanks again. That's an amazing question. Would be great to hear your experience with peer to peer connections here at CCI. You find you're at the top of my screen, so I'll always start with you. Maybe okay. we'll change the, the order uh... later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're actually like in the committee meeting where we actually talk about like the interactions between peers and we found it's quite helpful if they have some like collaborative projects because uh, current students are actually coming from various backgrounds for example like Joe's from more like arts and design backgrounds uh, I did social science during my undergrad so I personally I would like to hear like a different views and opinions you know to working on similar projects maybe I can get some uh, inspirations, also some new skills, you know, through peer learning. Um, yeah. Thank you, Fan. Callum also shared a similar question here. They're also interested in collaboration among peers opportunities. So yeah, we'll keep continuing covering that. Simone, would you like to go next, sharing a little bit about your experience? Okay, uh, just as the question says, CCI is to help us develop our own research. So we will focus on indep independent research uh, quite a amount of time. But in the classroom, our staff, our teachers will have some group discussion and assignments, presentation to help us discussion together, you know, uh, the students from CCI are come from different, quite background. Some studies physical, some studies psychological, and uh, different design fields. That will help us to come out with our ideas together. And uh, I think that's uh, what MRS aims to. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Simone. Thanks. Joe, would you like to add something there as well? Yeah, I'd love to speak to that one. Um, so, yeah, in terms of collaboration, we have a couple of classes with the rest of the CCI campus. Um, and also I'm sat just next to the kitchen, which is like constantly filled with all of the students from the campus. So it's like really, really good for kind of like integrating between all the different groups. So we're meeting loads and loads of other um, like the, the MSC students uh, who are obviously a lot better at coding usually, so they're happy to have around. Um, and we're able to kind of like start up projects with them, start up collaborations with them really, really easily. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of, I usually spend most of my time working in here instead of the library. Um, it's quite a nice space. We get free tea and coffee, so and it's quite warm. Um, so it's somewhere that's quite quite inviting to just spend most, most, of, the, most of your time. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a lot of like cross communication between between different areas of research, um, but yeah, the, as you were saying, with the with it being the MRES, all of our research is super super different, but you do find ways that like you can communicate between 
those those different ideas. They all wrap around some way. Thank you, Joe. That was amazing. We've got another question from Callum now, and it's about the class size. So how big are the classes? Would you like to take that one? Maybe, Yulia, do you want to start with that? Sure. Um, yeah, thank you, Callum, for this question. It's It will depend. I mean, the Emirates will always try and stay a smaller cohort because it's meant to kind of like imitate a little bit the research culture, um, you know, uh, and, and try to stay true to kind of uh, uh, a real number, for example, of how many PhD students you would have in the same institute. Um, so we tend to never want to go more than 15. I think the maximum might be 20. Um, right now, I think the class will be maximum 15 this year. Um, and uh, we're that's I think that's a sweet number to be at uh, because we can um, we can help everyone kind of like develop their projects and you know uh, give them really tailored kind of feedback. Uh, that being said, um, there are some so this year there have been some kind of units that have been altered from the MSc classes um, and those are far far bigger. Um, so the students, the Emirates students will find themselves in classes of 100 students if they're auditing from the MSc. Um, that's just going to be, uh, I think, this year and from next year, because we're bringing those units uh, back to the Emirates, there's probably not going to be more than 20 students. Hmm. Thank you, Yulia. I think the next one is going to be for you as well. So we've got Christina. Mm -hmm asking us, what is the difference between the MRES in creative computing and the MSc in creative computing? Right, that's, uh, I can take that one. Um, it's a very, very, very simple one. Uh, MRES is research. Um, like the out, it's in terms of the output, you will, the output of an MRES um, will be contribution to knowledge. The output of an MSc uh, might sometimes be uh, an element of a practice. That could be an object, an interaction, a game or so on. Um, so, uh, if you are more kind of like interested with on developing uh, skills in terms of you know practical skills of coding, then the MSc is for you. Um, if you want to pursue a career in research and you want to learn the skills of producing research in those domains, um, the focus will not be on uh, advancing necessarily your coding skills, but rather advancing your research skills, um, and the output will be research. It's a bit difficult in, in certain ways, so it might be a bit trickier in certain ways, but, uh, and, and the MSc, you know, uh, poses challenges more in terms of technicalities to kind of uh, programming. So then, you know, they both have advantages and disadvantages, but I'd say if, you know, you want to develop skills in a certain practice, then it's the MSc. If you want to do research, then it's the MRES. Thank you, Yulia. All right, since we haven't received any more questions from the chat, we're going to go through a few questions that we have from the frequently asked questions. And the first one that I know that Yifan was interested in sharing a little bit more about is what is the Embrace like for a non-UK citizen? Yifan, would you like to share with us? Uh, yeah, so um, the Embrace program is, so uh, I've been to different uh, UK universities, also European universities before, and uh, the, the difference is, here is that in the unrest like Yulia said like the the class size is really small so like every student can have the you know opportunity to speak about their own research and also you know talk to the tutors in their individual times uh which is amazing i really appreciate the chance and another thing as a non-uk citizen is like uh people are being very very nice and uh, so at the beginning of uh, the study and then the course leaders will share a lot of like workshops and also uh, study helps, you know, for international students to uh, accommodate like the UK educational system. And also um, there are lots of like uh, school help, you know, like uh, language help and also uh, other um, like uh, other departments that are going to help uh, the international students to settle in. Thank you, Ifan. That's super helpful for anyone out there thinking about coming to to London to study this. That's super amazing to hear. Beautiful. And another question that we receive um, very often is about the technical resources that are available to CCI students. So we already covered that in the beginning when the, um, the video was played about all the resources and facilities, but it would be really cool to hear from all of you what technical resources are you actively using and you find most helpful when 
you're developing your own research, your own projects, um, would be here, would be great to hear from you. Who would like to share a little bit about that? Maybe uh, Joe? I can take it. Oh, oh right, you're fine. Okay. No, yeah, go uh, ahead, Yifan. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I want to say, like, I don't feel technical resources are, I mean, like, I'm referring to people. So uh, I talked to a bunch of uh, technicians before, and uh, I learned a lot of, uh, like, programming, also coding related knowledge that is not significantly covered in the classroom, uh, something like uh, version control and also uh, GitHub development. And also, I learned about a little bit like their industrial experience before joining uh, CCI. So I feel this is like the best part because like, even though for me, uh, I'm not coming from a computing background. So it could be a little bit for me to digest all the, you know, coding knowledge at the beginning, but like with the help of the technicians and I feel I'm being more confident, you know, like completing tasks on my own. Thank you, Ifan. Joe, you can go next if you want. Um... I feel a bit bad uh, speaking too much to this one because I, I have a studio outside of this. Uh, however, the laser cutter and that kind of kit is um, is incredible. But more just the people, the technicians are really, really, really helpful. Um, so they will kind of like sit down and explain things to you. I've only ever used the coding ones so far. Yeah, again, I'm not a great coder. Um, so they've been really helpful to speak to uh, the technicians about kind of like coding issues that you're having at the time. Um, but yeah, so downstairs they also have a laser cutter. There's 3D printers all about the place, but um, uh, and I think they're just like free and open to use. So I don't think you need. Yeah, I think once you've had like one induction, you're able to use them however you uh, see fit. Um, yeah, and also I'm using one of the laptops right now from the laptop locker. There's like yeah, there's plenty of resources about um, for students. Mm. Thank you, Joe. Simone, is there any specific resource you would like to highlight and share here with everyone watching? Uh, I think most of the important uh, these two guys had already talked about. And besides, uh, did they mention about that we have already a dark lamp in our own building that we can do some VR and uh, projection mapping here and do some interaction mapping. And uh, some, some uh, and at a big welcome day, they told me, they told us that we have some digital uh, fabrications in the future. And uh, I think that should be mentioned. That's, that's all. Thank you, Simone. Beautiful. So we still have five minutes left. So we're going to be covering a few more questions. So we've got this one here. Is there a specific teacher or professor that leads you in your search or your research question? Um, I'd be up for speaking to that one. Um, so I obviously, Yulia is our main contact and port of call. Um, however, we, and, and Yulia is great for a conversation around work, but um, there are also like, if you've had a class with a different teacher and you're like, oh, okay, I like that, bye, 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 um, then you can message them on Slack and um, have a conversation with them. So I've been meeting up with Caroline Sinders, who's one of the uh, critical studies teachers, um, and they have uh, like been helping. They they specifically look into like labor relations and artificial intelligence. So um, I've had these conversations with Caroline, um, which have been really really helpful towards my research and my work. Um, and she's helped me devise the experiment that I'm working on at the moment. Um, so you can kind of bring in whoever um, around the campus, uh, and there are a lot of like uh, researchers and uh, like lecturers who you can uh, have good conversations with. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing, Joe. We've got another question from the audience. Wong Rachel is asking us, has the course fully resumed physical classes and teaching? I see you guys are at different places. Julia, would you like to take that one? Sure. Um, yes, we are actually probably one of the only uh, only postgraduate, oh, my light switched off. Uh, one of the only uh, postgraduate programs that CCNA has absolutely no online class. Usually you can have one per term. Um, and you know that's kind of trying to accommodate, um, uh, you know, room bookings and uh, demands. But no, uh, Emres is fully online, fully um, uh, in person. And actually, we're 
all in very similar different rooms on campus, um, maybe except for Ivan and uh, Gigi. Um, but yes, we're we are uh, all here. Um, it just so happens that this uh, presentation is online. <laughs> Thank you, Yuli, for clarifying. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, we can see a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, Simone is working. showing us. Yes. We're all here, like this. In real CCI. life. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, real. Me, Joe, and Simone, we're all in CCI. It's real. <laughs> Amazing. Sorry, Thank, Thank you. Switch so. on the light. There we go. <laughs> yeah, of course. Right. So I would like to finish the session before covering one very important question, and it's the following one What is the CCI community like? And I would like to hear from all of you. Um, would you like to start, Joe? Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's it's really, really um, community or oriented. Uh, as I say, we, we communicate a lot with the other courses that are involved with uh, CCI at master's level. So um, I think there's about 200 other students on the master's program at CCI. So this a whole kitchen area is constantly like filled with people all doing all kinds of things and then yeah i quite often go to the local pubs uh with most of the other course mates um yeah, yeah it's a really really good community uh and a really fun group thank you joe for sharing simon would you like to share as well uh, oh could you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, for me, CCI community is more like a big family. Uh, it, it's including all kinds of students in different majors, which allows us to exchange different knowledge. Uh, for example, I'm a fashion designer and my classmates, they have different studies in different fields which help us communicate with each other in different disciplines. And the staffs are very friendly here and the class atmosphere is quite interesting. And you can speak freely here, for example, in our, in our critical studies, different teachers will use different forms to teach every week, which is kind of interesting and uh, the environment here is just as free as other colleges of UAL. The staff will listen to your suggestions and carefully and uh, adjust immediately for you as you can see from their actions and they will treat you as a friend and uh, com you can communicate with them without any pressure. So I really like here. That's all. Thank you, Simone. Thanks for sharing. Yifan, your turn. What is the CCI community like? Uh, I really enjoyed it. This is my second year studying at CCI. And um, as a queer and also a racially minority people, I feel like um, I feel like the environment in general is very inclusive and people are like respecting your background, respecting your values. And I could receive like a lot of like supports, not only from teachers but also from like uh, classmates you know you can run to run to different people and in general I feel it's diverse it's inclusive and it's amazing thank you Ivan nice Yuli would you like to add something there to finish up with I always feel like I can't there's nothing I can say that will contribute to their answers um, because I almost want to you know end up on on that note um, that everyone is not only, you know, I think it's a lovely community that's, uh, you know, accepting, diverse and creatively inspiring. Um, I never run out of inspiration being here uh, every day. So I'm, you yeah, know, I'm grateful for your guys' contribution. Actually, I, I kind of want to end there. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Julia. Beautiful. So we made it to the end of the session. I wanted to Thank you all for being here, Yulia, Yifan, Simone, and Joe for sharing your experience. And of course, thanking everyone who participated with questions and who are watching us as well. So before we end, just wanted to let you know that our email inbox is always open. So if you have any other queries about the course, about CCI, any questions that were not covered today, you can email us at cci at arts.ac.uk and we will happily reach out and give you all the answers needed. 
And we also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content and to follow us on social media. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram. And if you just type UAL underscore CCI, you'll be able to find us. We share a lot of activities, workshops, uh, events that are happening. There's actually a postgraduate open day, open day, not sorry, a postgraduate show happening now in December, which it would be lovely to see you all there in person. And yes, in the meantime, um, take care, everyone. We look forward to meeting you all in person. And yes, we'll speak very soon. Thank you so much, everyone.